Good morning. We're so excited that you're here with us, and I'm going to call up Tyler Slayton for our welcome and announcements. <laughs> together. Uh, for everybody that's here in person, welcome. I'm excited to see your faces. For all of you who are with us online, thank you guys so much for joining us and for being a part of worship today. Uh, today is a special Sunday in our church. We are celebrating our graduating seniors from this year, and that'll happen later on in the service. And so I'm really glad that you guys get to be here and to celebrate that with us and with them. Uh, just a couple more announcements before we go into worship. Tonight at five o'clock, we have an information meeting in our sanctuary uh, and yeah, at 5 o'clock. It's just going to be giving some information on what is upcoming in the church and what we've got going on. And there's a, an administrative council meeting that will be happening directly after that. So if you're on administrative council, come to that. Uh, next week, we also have a church-wide picnic at Cornerstone Ranch that is going to be at 6 p.m., um, if you haven't RSVP'd for that, we would really appreciate it if you would. Uh, we just need to know how much food to have. You're still welcome. We want to see everybody there, uh, whether you RSVP or not. We want this to just be as big an event as it can be, but we'd sure love to know if you're coming. Uh, I think that's about everything that I have. So if you, oh, and yeah. <laughs> so my son was born this past week. <laughs> So that is Oliver Jacob Slayton. Uh, thank you guys so much for all of your prayers and all of your support and love that you guys have given me and my wife and our family. Uh, it has been just an incredible week and an amazing time, and I'm so excited to be able to raise him in such an incredible church and an incredible community. So thank you all for that. <laughs> and so if you guys would just bow your heads with me and go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for all the many, many blessings that you have laid on us. God, for all the incredible things that you do and that you bring to us in our lives. And God, I pray that as we go into this time of worship, that we would shut out any distractions or anything going on outside of this place and be able to focus and hone in solely on spending time with you. God, we love you so much and we thank you for, once again, all the many things that you've done for us and it's in your holy, holy name we pray. Amen. Why you ever chose me It's always been a mystery All my life I've been told I belong At the end of the line With all the other not quite With all the never get it right But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody about somebody saved my soul ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing living for the world to see nobody but Jesus living for the world to see nobody but Jesus when Moses had stage fright David brought a rock to the soul Big 12 outsiders, nobody would have chosen to change the world. But the moral of the story is, everybody's got a purpose. But when I hear that devil start talking to me, say, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody all about somebody saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, 
into your arms the riches of your love will always be
may be seated. Hey, everybody. Y'all doing okay this morning? Good, good. We have several graduates that we're going to recognize in a few minutes this morning, and uh, we have some college graduates also this year, but we're going to recognize the high school graduates this morning. Uh, so thankful for them. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, after, we re after Tyler comes up in a few minutes and recognizes them, um, Tori Dahlgren is going to bring the message this morning. And... Uh, <coughs> I think that's a very brave thing to do because when I was 18 years of age, there's no way you could have got me in front of a bunch of people on a microphone. So we're very thankful that she's here. And uh, if you're watching us online, we want to thank you so much. We want to thank you for supporting us. Uh, uh, some of our online uh, folks from far away are supporting us financially, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, so thankful for all of you that are committed to the church. Uh, the website is gmvumc.org. If you haven't filled out a connection card on there, I encourage you to. And uh, let us know if you're coming to the picnic next Sunday on that connection card if you want to. We're just trying to get an accurate count so we'll know how many hamburgers and hot dogs to, to cook, okay? So we're going to have fun next Sunday. Hope everybody keeps that in mind. Hope everybody comes to the informational meeting tonight. Uh, there's a basket back there if you want to give right now or anytime during the service. But right now, let's just give thanks to God for his material blessings uh, and ask his blessing upon the offering. Father, we honor you. We thank you, God, so much for these graduates. Lord, uh, <clears throat> adulting is hard, even for those of us that have done it for a long time. And we pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would rest upon each and one of these young people as they go forward in their lives, as they start jobs and careers and, and college and all those things that lie ahead of them. And Lord, we just pray that each and every day your spirit would speak to them. Lord, sometimes we know you whisper. Sometimes, Lord, we know you shout. <laughs> We're thankful for both. So guide them, Lord, and be with them and protect them and, uh, and keep them safe. Uh, and help them always, Lord, to be a witness for you and your kingdom. As we bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse, God, we're very aware of how blessed we are. Uh, and so, God, I pray that you bless the giving and receiving. Pour out a blessing that we cannot even receive upon those who are generous. We'll honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. <laughs> uh, it is my joy to be able to celebrate our graduating seniors this year. So for my seniors, as your slide comes up and as I say your name, feel free to stand up in place so that we can celebrate you for each uh, senior. We've only got a few, so I think that each one deserves their own uh, round of applause. And so as each one comes up, uh, or not comes up, stands up, or chooses not to, we'll just go ahead and celebrate them here uh, this morning. <laughs> you don't have to, it's okay, whatever. <laughs> so let's go ahead to the first one. All right, we have Kendall Ragland, who it cannot be here this morning. She actually was accepted as a cheerleader at, uh, I think it was Central Alabama, 
and she's actually on a full ride scholarship, and so she was trying out for that yesterday and could not be here this morning. But let's go ahead and celebrate her and give her a round of applause. Anyway. Thank Apparently I can't clap, it's gonna be loud in the microphone. We have Talon Dahlgren. Talon's here this morning. Congratulations, Talon. Tori Dahlgren. Trent Weigert, who I don't know if is in this service or not. And Margaret Greenwood. And uh, since Steve mentioned it, do we have any college graduates who are here this Sunday morning? If y'all college graduates want to go ahead and stand up, we'll celebrate you as well. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you for such a fantastic accomplishment in your lives. Uh, I'm really proud of each of you guys. And uh, for my high school graduates, be sure to see me after the service. I've got a card for you. All right, we love you guys. I'm obviously not very prepared. Hi. My gosh. Um, so, hi, I'm Tori. I'm very afraid. Um, today, I wanted to talk about fear and validation because growing up is scary, and so is this microphone. Yeah, we're just gonna hold it. Um, so fear and validation. A sermon from a girl who is scared of literally everything. Um, so we're gonna talk about all the different kinds of fears there are. So first, what is fear? This is fear an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Okay, there are valid fears, there are rational fears and irrational fears. Rational fears would be like in Matthew 14, 28 through 31. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. If you told me to walk on water, I would say absolutely not. You, you could not do anything to get me to walk on water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt if the Lord told me to do something, which he does, but I'm a teenage girl, so I don't listen to anyone but myself. <laughs> Think about walking on that water and taking that leap of faith. That's terrifying, and that's a very, that's a rational fear to walk on water and to go out to Jesus and walk on water. Another rational fear is in Luke 1, 29, verse 31, where the angel says, yo, Mary, you're pregnant. If you walked up to a virgin and you were like, hey, by the way, you're giving birth to the savior of the world. That's terrifying. That's a lot of pressure to put on little virgin Mary. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. That's a great honor to be favored by God. We all are favored by God, but that's still really scary that God's like, yo, you're the mom to the savior. And that's a valid, that's, that's a rational fear. In Exodus 2, 11 through 14, Moses smacks this Egyptian and then 
people find out about it, and he feels guilty, and he's scared. Years later, after Moses had grown up, he went out to his own people and observed their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beat a Hebrew, one of his people. Looking all around and seeing no one, he struck the Egyptian dead and hid him in the sand. He walked up, and was in, in his mind, I'm sure it was justified, he was like, no, he's beating my friend. I got to beat him. So the next day, he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you attacking your neighbor? Who made you a leader and judge over us? The man replied, are you planning to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses became afraid and thought, what I did is certainly known. He killed this guy and then got scared that people found out about it. And that's kind of like having a little lie and then people kind of figure out your lie and you're like, oh, dang. Oh, no. And that's a rational fear. If you killed somebody, I, like, I'd be afraid. Yeah. Um, so the next slide, I don't know what the next slide is. Okay. <laughs> Two years ago today, I was in an accident, and I cut off a good portion of two of my fingers. This is my, bro <laughs> this is my twin brother, Talon. Hi. Um, my family was really supportive, as you can see. I, this was right after they had sewn them back on. Um, and my brother's being really supportive, and I was really scared, and he was trying so hard to make me feel better, and this is his attempt, and I love it so much. He's embarrassed. Um. <laughs> There are also irrational fears. I am so scared of ankles. Hear me out. You can't touch my ankles. Don't touch my ankles. I will give you a bloody nose. You cannot touch my ankles. So of course, that's not quite as rational as, hey, Mary, you're pregnant, or hey, just come walk on water, it's chill. Um, but that's still a very big fear of mine is ankles. I'm also scared of the Chuck E. Cheese mouse. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna say that that's a rational fear. But this was a very real, what I believe to be rational fear. I had my identity as, as a musician. My dad is deaf, my family signs, and the first thing that came to mind was, I'm never gonna be able to talk to my dad again. I'm never gonna be able to play music again because I set my identity in those things and not in God, not as who God made me, but I am a musician. I am the kid with the deaf dad. Amen. <laughs> and I was always scared of things growing up. I was scared of how people would react. Why is my dad deaf? That's so weird, you're not normal, stop. Um, I was scared of my ambitions because growing up everybody was like, I'm gonna be a nurse. I'm gonna be a teacher. And I was like, I might be on Broadway one day, that'd be cool. And everybody was like, that's such a childish dream, why are you, stop. I was scared of school. I moved here the summer of eighth grade and I didn't know anybody, it was really scary. I didn't. I, I don't quite fit in here, but that's okay because God made us all unique. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't have to fit in because I fit somewhere in heaven. I've always been really scared. If you see my brother has on a silver robe, I'm calling you out, bro. He has on a silver, ro sil sil silver robe, and that's because he did the academic. He's really smart. I do not have a silver robe. But he does, he's really smart, and I've always been really embarrassed of that. Not that he's smart, but because I don't have that silver robe, and I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to impress everybody. Um, so that's always a fear. I'm scared, I feel left out of things that I shouldn't feel left out of. It's about to get really weird and personal. <laughs> I feel left out that I'm a virgin. That should not ever be something that happens. That should not ever be something you feel left out. What? Everyone in school is like, they're, they're pregnant with like their 27th kid and I'm, absolutely not. And people make you feel bad because you're different. 
and that's terrifying. And that's, that's a rational fear, is being afraid of what people think of you. That's a rational fear. Two years ago today, I was in this accident, and I had to relearn everything. I had to relearn how to write, how to sign, how to play music, how to, how to live. And life is sort of kind of not really back to normal. <laughs> um, I was diagnosed with PTSD because of this, and my heart was really just crushed, and I felt like God just kind of like slapped me across the face like Moses did that Egyptian. Um, because I'm already so not normal. And then God was like, PTSD, cool, that's great, thank you. Um, and I didn't feel validated because yes, this happened to me and this doesn't typically happen to your peers, but everybody started saying things like, yeah, well, you didn't fight in World War II and get your leg cut off. No, I didn't. I, I didn't, and I'm so sorry for that. Um, but this did happen to me, and that's terrifying, and this is a valid fear. And people like to belittle us and make us feel invalid. So if you are scared of the Chuck E. Cheese mouse, or if you are scared of people touching your ankles, that may not, an irrational fear doesn't make it invalid. Irrational does not mean invalid because it's personal to you. If you've seen those shows where it's they, people are afraid of something and they bring it out to the person and they have to face it, there was this one lady that was scared of cotton balls and like literally ran off stage. I mean, I'm not scared of cotton balls, but she is, and that's, to me, that's irrational. But that's still a valid, that's still valid because she's afraid of it. In Joshua 1.9, God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We, we've been given a command by God to not be afraid. And I feel like growing up, if your mom said, clean your room, you would do it because you're afraid of your mom. <laughs> God is so much higher than your parents. Sorry, parents. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. But God is so much higher than your parents, so why would you listen to your mom, which is a good thing, honor thy father and thy mother, listen to your parents and then not listen to God? God is your dad. He's just kind of like up there. So when God says, have I not commanded you, do not be afraid, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Why don't we listen to him? I know that our fears may not be as scary as, hey, you're pregnant, hey, um, I know you killed this guy, or hey, come walk to me on water with scary creatures underneath. They may not seem that big to everybody else looking in, but they're valid. They are valid no matter how small they may seem to other people and how big they seem to you. Like, I can see the judgment in all of your eyes when I say I'm scared of ankles. <laughs> I can see it. And you're like, what's wrong with her? A lot of things. <laughs> A lot of things. I'm 18 years old and I said, hey, Pastor Steve, I wanna preach. A lot of things are wrong with me. But that's like a very big thing to me. You cannot touch them, and that's a really big, big deal to me, as big a deal as getting my fingers cut off. That's a big deal, but it's not to you, but that doesn't make it any less valid. God says that we're the apple of his eye. That's one of those slides. I'm not very prepared. It's Psalm 17, yeah. 
I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. God, God, he hears us, he sees us struggling, and he's not ignoring us. We're just not listening. We're scared of what he'll say. We're scared that he's going to be, oh, it's okay, no, just don't worry about it. He's not going to do that because he knows that our personal fears are personal to us. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O oh, you who save those who trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat heart. <laughs> they have closed up their fat hearts with their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey and like a young lion lurking in secret places. There are always going to be those people who are trying to constantly tear you down and tell you that you're being irrational. I know a lot of time when we say we're afraid of things, a lot of, a lot of the time what we get is, oh, it's okay, everybody goes through that. I am so scared to graduate. I can't adult, I can barely child. <laughs> and to graduate, I'm so scared. And I've talked to people about it, and every time what I get is, it's okay, everyone's scared to graduate. That's not what we need to hear. I mean, yeah, you're not alone. Everyone is scared to graduate. But doesn't that make you feel just a little less than? Like it's, it, it, it's invalidating your fear? So when people keep saying, oh, it's okay, everyone's scared to graduate. Yeah, okay, but I have personal fears, and I'm going to need you to acknowledge that. It's okay. We are the apple of God's eye, and we are valid. Our fears are valid in his eyes, and we are protected. So why don't we walk proudly like we're protected? Why don't we go around and be unafraid? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are all different. And sometimes that is something to be afraid of. We're different. I don't look like you. You don't look like me. Thank God. But God gave us a command. Joshua 1.9 is my favorite verse. Have I not commanded you? He commands us. You can go, the, the words do not be afraid are used like 40 times throughout, probably more than 40. I can do math not the silver rope, um, are used a lot in the Bible. He has commanded us, he's given us command after command after command, do not be afraid. And eventually in Joshua 1, Joshua 1, 9, he gets <laughs> fed up. Bro, have I not told you to calm down? And I think that's really important because that just shows how many times we're ignoring him. So he keeps saying, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And then here we are, we're afraid again, and instead of calling on him, we're sitting here shaking like a dog with their tail between their legs. When he has given us command after command, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So as you're running off stage from cotton balls, as you're struggling on your two-year anniversary of your fingers, of your big accident, as you're afraid of graduating or afraid of getting old or afraid of losing a loved one, God has commanded us to not be afraid. We cannot be afraid. And those small fears that you have that you don't tell anybody because you think that they'll judge you? Ankles? Those are valid. Those are so valid. And you cannot find validation in other humans. You can't. You're not going to find it in other humans. You can only find validation in God. And I'm not here for you to validate 
me. I don't need your validation. <laughs> One of the really big fears that I had today, when I talk about this accident, I talk about myself because it's my accident. And I was really scared today that I was going to make this all about me and not what God has done. And I prayed for like weeks about this. Because when you talk about yourself, that's what you're talking about, yourself. But I want you to leave knowing that God has commanded you to not be afraid. He's commanded you to be strong and courageous. Face those cotton balls. Do it. Do not be afraid of losing a loved one, as they're going to go to heaven, hopefully. They're going to be in such a better place. Do not be afraid of losing things you don't think about losing. I didn't think I was ever going to lose my fingers. What? That's random. Who said that? What? Not me. But now that it's happened, I hate that this is what it took for me to get closer to God. I hate that I had to lose a part of myself physically and personality-wise for me to get closer to God. It took this to realize that God has commanded me throughout my entire life to be strong and courageous and to not be afraid. It took this to realize that, yeah, I'm different, but I'm the apple of his eye. I am so loved by God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I don't need other people to validate me. Why would I look for validation in humans when God has told me that I am worthy and I am valid. So that was a, um, a sermon from a girl who's scared of literally everything. <laughs> um, I'm not good at praying, but I'm going to try because we're conquering those cotton balls. So bow your head. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. You have done so much with this church and in the lives of these people. I pray that the church understands that they are so valid in everything that they do and that you, you love them so much. And we are the apple of your eye. You have created us in your image and everything that we do, we try to do for you, Lord. I pray that this church goes knowing that they are absolutely loved and validated in your eyes. And we seek approval from humans that we're not going to get. We only find approval in you, Lord. You've commanded us to not be afraid. And my prayer for this church is that we go out and not be afraid, that we follow that commandment that you have told us so many times. So as we go, thank you so much for everything that you've done and for protecting us and keeping us, keeping us safe and keeping us under the shadow of your wings so that all evil will not prevail. The fears that we have, Lord, they are not as big as the love that you have for us. The love you have for us is so much stronger than anything, than any evil we could face. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing our last song today, um, just know that the altars are always open, whether you're at home or whether you're here you have a place that you can go and meet God.
Well, I was blessed today. Amen. First of all, my mom's here. So glad she's here. And to hear that message was just amazing. Thank you, Tori. Amen. And actually, there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. One, one for every day of the week. One for every day of the year. Because God knows that each and every day we're afraid. Amen. So he reminds us every day, fear not, for I am with you. Go in peace. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen.